टुडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट की परफॉर्मेंस इंडिकेटर्स और केपीआई एंड डैशबोर्ड फॉर अ क्लिनिकल लेबोरेटरी इट इज पार्ट ऑफ माय सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन क्लिनिकल लेबोरेटरी मैनेजमेंट और लैब मैनेजमेंट दिस इज माय लेक्चर आउटलाइन फर्स्ट आई विल गिव इंट्रोडक्शन देन आई विल टॉक अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ केपीआई after that advantages and limitations of kpi then how to select kpi then i will give like examples of kpi in finance sales marketing it and customer care operational and machine related and human resource management related kpis then i talk about kpis for a clinical laboratory and after that i'll talk about dashboards so key performance indicators or kpi is a quantifiable measure of performance over time for a specific objective so this is a kind of definition of key performance indicator key performance indicators are realistic specific measurable and quantifiable performance metric whereas values set for kpis provide targets for team to shoot for milestones to goals progress and insights for monitoring and making decisions so when value is set for kpi then it become a target otherwise kpi is a key matrix or key performance indicator every metric or measure cannot be a kpi it should be a key metric they are the critical matrices or measures we should avoid kpi overload and we should create a kpi driven culture or a stronger kpi strategy businesses generally measure and track kpis through analytics software and reporting tools types of kpi i'll talk about various approaches one of the approach is internal versus external so internal kpi is the low level kpi it is a key performance indicator for an individual for a section for a function of an organization then external kpi is a higher level kpi as compared to internal kpi and the topmost level is business kpi these are performance indicators for entire business then quantitative versus qualitative kpi as name suggest quantitative kpi their value is quantitative whereas qualitative kpi the value is qualitative then leading kpi and lagging kpi leading kpi is help predicting outcome whereas lagging kpi is track what has already happened then another type of classification of kpi is strategic kpi the most high level kpi or a business level kpi operational kpi more focused on a much shorter time frame functional kpi it is of specific department functions within a company then we can uh, decide on levels of kpi one is company wide kpi as i talked about business kpi the department level kpi or the lower level is project level or sub department level kpis then what are the advantages and limitations of key performance indicators key performance indicators allow companies to set objectives as i told you that when values is set to kpi then it become a target kpis monitor the progress toward the objective set KPI are the bridge that connects actual business operations with goals. KPI promote a data-driven approach. KPI engage employees when the, the set value is trans uh, is communicated to employees, then they are better engaged. Then KPI make everyone accountable for performance. There are certain limitations of KPI. KPIs require constant monitoring and close follow-up to be useful. there may be a long time frame required for certain kpis to provide meaningful data so these are some of the limitations of kpi 
then how to select KPI, what are the steps. First of all, we define how KPI will be used. Then we tie the proposed KPI to strategic goals of the business. Also, we align internal KPIs with business KPIs. KPI should be actionable, that is, select those KPI on the basis of which actions can be taken. Design a good dashboard. I'll talk about dashboard at the end of uh, uh, my lecture. So design a good dashboard with properly grouped KPI or classified KPIs. And uh, we should be prepared to change the list of KPIs as and when need arises. Then uh, let us quickly go through various examples of KPIs. So first of all, uh, financial aspect of a company. So the KPIs include gross profit margin, net profit margin, operating profit margin, operating expense ratio, working capital ratio, liquidity ratio, solvency ratio, turnover ratios, debt to equity ratio. Detail of these are available on internet. Then uh, some of the examples in sales management, new inbound leads, new qualified opportunities, total pipeline value, sales volume by location, average order value, lead to win rate, MRR growth rate. Then some of the examples in marketing division, marketing qualified leads, sales qualified leads, conversion rates, social program return on investment, return on ad spend cost per conversion, customer lifetime value, customer acquisition cost or CSE, lifetime value to cost of acquisition ratio, then CSE, that is customer acquisition cost payback period. So these are some of the examples of KPI related to marketing. Then uh, KPI related to IT and uh, customer care, total support tickets, open support tickets, Reopen tickets, average response time, ticket resolution time, security related downtime, IT cost versus revenue. First contact resolution rate, most active support agents, customer effort score. Then some of the examples related to operational and machine related or equipment related. Operational uh, examples are production efficiency, total cycle time, throughput, error rate. Then equipment related, overall equipment effectiveness, availability of equipment, downtime of equipment, performance of equipment, quality of production, cycle time ratio, capacity utilization and rejection rate. Some of the examples of uh, human resource management aspect, number of applicants for a job, employee turnover rate, employee satisfaction. This is after a survey of employees. Then absenteeism rate, number of overtime work, hour work. So these are human resource management related examples of KPI. Now let us see what are the KPI or what is the role of key performance indicators in uh, management of a clinical laboratory. So clinical laboratory processes can be divided into pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical as I have already described in my lecture. Uh, those who are interested can go through the uh, video list on YouTube lectures on lab management. So pre-analytical uh, processes, some of the KPIs are Erroneous request, erroneous sample, sample not taken. So these are some of the pre-analytical. So erroneous request include uh, uh, mismatch between the requisition form and sample. And erroneous sample include hemolyze, plotted, and unsuitable, inadequate samples. So uh, these may be divided into further details. So this I have taken from this article. Then analytical process include external control exceeds specifications. So when there are, this is a measure of out of after control situations. Then analytical imprecision, this is something related to 
uh, measure of uncertainty in measured in terms of coefficient of variance variance this is variance then systematic error and total error this i have taken from this article then post analytical process some of the kpis include hard copies of reports sent to centers or clinical units critical value reporting reports or results exceed delivery time and uh, another measure which is not stated in the list is turnaround time then report from refer test exceed delivery time incidents related to data processing network between centers this is the source of this information then uh, this uh, article uh, beautifully describe the relationship between kpis in a clinical laboratory so these are various kpis which are interrelated now a brief about dashboard a dashboard is a visual display of the most vital information needed to achieve one or more objectives combined and organized on a single screen so that the information can be monitored at a glance so this is a definition of a dashboard i have taken this from one of the article published article then the there should be relationship between indicators the key elements of the dashboard include the summarization and integration of indicators or key performance indicators as we have learned in this lecture the modeling of the underlying relationship between the indicators or matrices moves the dashboard from a simple presentation of information to a deeper understanding of business and a decision support system then the dashboard is usually a layered structure there may be one two or three layers and uh, with each deeper layer depicting details of each indicator on the superficial layer so uh, it is a drill down uh, kind of a structure uh, dashboard so what are the steps in design of a dashboard it is an incremental process of course first define the objectives of the dashboard then determine the key performance indicators to be displayed then determine the underlying relationship between the indicators and their mapping then uh, make the visual design of the dashboard and finally data is gathered and loaded uh, with the help of dashboard software this is the steps of designing of a dashboard so this is all for today thank you very much